Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. Bill, today what we're talking about is hurricanes in Florida. Okay? All right. Let me explain. Okay. Florida's always got hurricanes. Yeah. Always. Okay. It's part of living here. But a few things have changed, and I'm not going to get into climate change. Not really that much. I might mention it a little bit. <laughs> but we really, really need to talk about a few things. Okay. But before we do that, do me a favor, just consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel and it's greatly appreciated and I'll leave it at that. So Bill, we've been having a lot of hurricanes, it seems lately. There's another one in the Gulf, it's not hitting us, it's hitting Texas and... Mexico. Mexico? Okay, mm -hmm. I, I haven't looked where... Came up Mexico, Texas, Louisiana. Yeah, when we're shooting this video and stuff. Mm -hmm. But here's the problem, okay? If I was buying a house in Florida right now, I would definitely, definitely consider the situation with hurricanes. And before you say anything, I'll, let me tell you what I'm talking about. If I love living on the water, yep. okay, that's why I'm building on the water, because I love living on the water. But if I was, now I'm building on stilts, but if I was saying, okay, I'm going to go buy a house, I'm from the Northeast, and I want to live on the water, and I sell my house, and I go down to over here, and I would not buy a ranch on the water. You know, that's basically a house on, on the ground. On the ground. Grade. Yep. Okay. No matter what, <laughs> even, if, even, if they, even if they said to me, hey, this house never got flooded, mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it because I really, really believe it's only a matter of time before it, it does get flooded. And I know some people that got flooded not once, but five times or four times. Yeah. It's pathetic. Would you buy a house on the ground, a ranch? On the water? Yeah, on the water. No. Not unless I just didn't care. I mean, it would be concrete block. F it would be it would be concrete floors and concrete walls, kind of like right. a prison. Because then it just dries out and I move on. <laughs> you know, like it, it's you have to decide what you want to do and where you want to be. If you want to live on the water, you live on the water. I mean, I know that there's there's thousands upon thousands of homes on the water that don't flood yeah okay we don't know all right so let's continue on this part of it then okay so there's homes that that don't flood mm -hmm. all right so if you found a home say it was built in the 60s okay and they tell you it never flooded and it's on a canal it's on the water okay mm -hmm. floodplain whatever would you buy it then well, I would do my research. I wouldn't just go willy-nilly buying it because the, the owner that said, oh, it hasn't flooded in 10 years. The, the, the positive is I grew up here, so I kind of know where things flood and things don't. So how would somebody, maybe you can't even answer this question, how would somebody go about checking, easy one. <laughs> checking out a house to see if it's been flooded in the last 30 years or 25 years whatever well it's it's hard to tell if the house has been flooded that's part of the inspection process i don't know of any way that you can look at a history off the top of my head to go in 30 years this house has been flooded because of x or y um, but what you can do is you can look at the elevations that's easy you can go to the gis and get a lot of information and pull the elevation of the house, even though you're on the water, you still may be 10 or 15 feet, 20 feet above sea level. It just depends on where you're at. So they would they would mark it at the highest level recorded, of water level recorded? No, no, no. The GI, that what I'm saying is that's the elevation of the land. Of the land, yeah. yeah but then right. you then you go to another chart and say what's the highest water ever recorded. In I'm that sure area? there's sites out there that do that. I'm there's got to be something because the information's out there, you know. Um, you know, if you look into permit history, if it's still, you know, if they go back that far, they're doing a much better job of keeping permits now, but um, to know if it's been flooded or not. Okay, so let's continue with hurricanes. Mm -hmm. Now, hurricane prone areas, which is pretty much all of Florida. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's Florida. I mean, we're, we're flat as a pancake and there's areas that typically get hit more with hurricanes versus others. Biggest issue is Insurance, insurance companies, I know people, you know people that are paying $1,000, $1,500 a month for homeowner's insurance. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which is, in, to me, is insane. Spending 
$1,500 or $2,000 a month just on insurance, I think is a not a waste of money, but I mean, it's like, come on. It's, it's out of control. We've talked about this, I mean, just endlessly we've talked about this. And at the, at the end of the day, you know, this is, I don't think we're, you know, the, the we, we can't really change the weather in respects to like, we need to change the weather, like snap our fingers. We're not, like I said, we're not gonna get into climate uh, change and stuff, but this is the, the legislation that's been passed to prevent like the frivolous lawsuits and things of those natures. That's gonna take a long time for it to kind of pan out and then level off because it's not gonna take effect right away. It's in practice, but it's going to take a minute. But even the other day, I, honestly, I was I was out somewhere and I heard somebody talking about needing a new roof, and they filed a claim and they ended up suing the insurance company to get a new roof. But it was just probably old. It was just old. Like I was listening to their conversation. Yeah, like my na just, my neighborhood, you know, everybody. I think I'm the only person who actually paid for a roof. <laughs> you know, that's, get, that that track follows you. <laughs> You know? No, of course. I mean, I, I do work for the insurance yeah. companies. I'm not going to, you know, scam them. But, you know, everybody was scamming the insurance companies. And they're like, well, you know, they did it. My neighbors did it. The Jones down the street did it. Whatever. And then what, what happens? It's like the insurance company as a whole, they're like, okay, it's cheaper to pay out. And, you know, so since it's cheaper to pay out, but the, the, everybody's premiums goes up. So I'm basically paying for that roof that they scammed the insurance company. And I know I'm being harsh. There's legit claims out there. Of course there are. There's tons of legit claims. There's more legit claims than there aren't. But in Florida, we do lead the nation in BS litigation claims for insurance. That's just a statistic. And people a think, you know, people think, you know, like I know a lot of people that scam the insurance companies and I know I shouldn't be using that word scam because a lot of these people watch this channel, but okay. <laughs> took advantage of their insurance because the, the roof was old. Okay. Um, now they got their renewals. Either they got dropped mm -hmm. or the premiums went up four grand, three, four grand. So let's say they save twelve or fifteen thousand, you know, on insurance. In three years, they have just paid for the roof. They're they're now they're going upside down and backwards. Like yeah. and, and and the funny thing is, I talked to a couple of them and they're like, "Hey, did you get your insurance bill for your house?" I'm like, yeah. And I showed them. I said, "This is what I'm paying." They're like, "How are you paying so little?" Because right. I got a new roof. You right. know, I put the peel and stick down. I got impact windows. You know, shingles. The whole works. You know, but how are you paying so cheap? I was like, I didn't file a claim. I right. paid for you it. Paid for the roof. Yeah, so I paid for it, so they know uh, it's legit. And you know, a lot of people, when you're selling a house too, they're like, Hey, Bill, find out what the insurance is, you know, for me. I'm, we're not insurance agents, but <laughs> you can't do that. You can't do that because that's <laughs> do with your credit, everything. It's, there's so much that goes into that. If you've had claims, how long ago? Um, so on and so forth. There's issue, you know, you have to look at the property itself. So that's an easy one, but I'm not you. I don't have, like you said, credit. I don't have your job history. You know, they look at you from a risk assessment, not just, you know, it's the structure itself. They're looking at you. Right. And so, but that's with hurricanes, they look, you know, that's the big thing too. Give you, let me talk about another thing. I went and did an inspection last week. The house was selling for 380 okay mm -hmm. they started off at 500 and now they're selling it at 380 it's a ranch on the canal so just to that's a really good point and i know we talked it's not the video but this is the point where everybody goes look you see because it ties into our previous video look you see how much the prices are coming down that's that's an artificial drop just because you you know you're selling it too high and then now you're getting back into reality when you're getting down into those numbers Right. I mean, that's the, just just so people understand. That's when you're looking at your Zillow's, Redfin's, Realtor.com's, etc. Okay, so it's it's so it's down to 380. Yep. But there's a house right next door to it, you know, and but it's on stilts, and that one's going for 750. Okay. Same square footage. So it's probably newer because it's on stilts. Yes, it's it's newer, um, and that one's because you're not allowed to build on. That's why I'm saying it's probably not, newer. You're not allowed to build ranches now <laughs> yeah. on the water. So it's a stilts, but you see the price difference? It's almost double the price mm -hmm. because it's on stilts. So if I was gonna buy a house because of hurricanes near the water, 
I would want it on stilts. Yeah. That's the only houses I would look at. Yeah, I mean, there's, but like I said, there's plenty of neighborhoods. I mean, look at all the neighborhoods that don't have it and they've never been flooded in our time, you know, since we've been around. Um, so it's not to say that you shouldn't buy one, but I would just use an abundant, an overabundance of caution. And if we were working together, I would tell you the same thing that it's not, it's, let's talk about a little bit more about hurricanes in general. Yeah. So there's more to it. We're, we, we kind of somehow or another got back onto insurance again. Um, because just, insurance and hurricanes is, but let's talk about like other considerations for hurricanes and you're living in Florida. Let's talk about some, some reality and some ways of life when there's a hurricane and you live on the water there's a good chance that you will have to evacuate. Right. So you have to have a place to go or you're going to be going to a shelter. True. You know, and you have to be prepared for that. And if you go to a shelter, I've got a lot of experience with the shelters, unfortunately. And if you don't have a place to go, only because I had to work there at the fire department. Um, if you so don't have you a place to go. You were actually in the shelter. I was actually in the shelter okay. working. Right. I had a place to go that wasn't when I had to leave the beach. Mm. I had places to go. But when I was working, I was working in the shelter with people and they give you this little tiny square and you can't bring a ton of stuff. You know, it's very, very minimal, you know, and you're just crammed into a little space while the hurricane passes. But you have to remember that's it's, it's a very hard situation to lock your house up and leave and hope that it's there when you come back, you know, or it's not damaged. It's just a weird feeling. You know, having done it, it's just a weird feeling that you would have to do that. But you have to say, be ready for that. That's a whole. That's a thing. You know, if you're in a, if you're in a high rise, you're leaving. You know, if you're under a hurricane uh, watch or warning, or it's imminent impact, you're gone. You have to leave. The power. If the power goes out, what are you, you're going to get stuck in the elevator. People aren't going to come for you until after the storm because they can't. The roads are covered with water. Sure. You know, or the bridges are shut down. You know, so it's just a lot of things you have to take into consideration when you're looking at purchasing a home on the water and just just food for thought, things to think about. Yeah, I mean, moving to Florida or living in Florida, if you're living in now, hurricanes is part of life. It really is. It is. You don't see me getting too worked up over storms. If I get worked up over a storm, you know that there's an issue. Right. I mean, some people are panicking over tropical storms, and I know some tropical storms, the no-name storm, you know, was a tropical um, but they panic, but you have to be prepared, okay? It's just part of life. Is, is, is global warming, I'm gonna bring it up real quick. Yeah. Could it, be, could it be affecting the climate and rising sea levels? Because like literally before we shot this video, I did a little bit of research talking points and they, they showed maps of three quarters of Florida underwater and only like little pieces of land mm -hmm. exposed. And they're like, they're saying that it, it's good, that's what it's going to be like in 30 years, which is pretty hard to believe. They're saying that Miami is going to be underwater within, one person was saying, within five years, Miami is going to be underwater. And I know Miami has a big problem with flooding, but I believe, and you, we'll get to you what you think, but I think the biggest problem with cost of hurricanes and damage and everything going on is that they're building in places they shouldn't be building. The population in Florida is increasing dramatically, so it's a lot more density, a lot more people in a dense yeah, area. Particularly in Miami, you have, it's the concrete jungle. If you've got asphalt and concrete and no green space, where's the water go? It it's goes true. into retention ponds and retention or perk ponds only can drain off so much water. So when they fill up and they can't drain any more water, the water's gotta go somewhere. So it's, you know, and I've been hearing that whole, you know, it's, this is what the Florida is going to look like, blah, blah, since I was a kid. Like, they've been talking about that since I can even remember. And I mean, if we went by some of the stuff that was going on, then, you know, when I was in school, we, you know, we should be at 140 degrees every single day and wearing, you know, tinfoil suits and, you know. I, I, didn't, I didn't grow up in Florida, so I don't yeah, know. But I'm just saying, I, I don't know what, what was said. Yeah, you know? that was, that's, an, that's somebody who lived in Florida. That's what everybody said. We're going to be underwater. And like my house that I grew up on should be completely underwater by now. And it's, it's not. You know, it's just, it, these are predictions. These are ideas. I think that there's a lot of validity to a lot of those ideas. Um, I think that, you know, we've, we've talked about this in the past. 
that I think there seems to be, because we did a video on this, I believe, about the um, storms. Are they more frequent, so on and so forth? Right. Are they worse? Um, I, I don't necessarily think they're worse, per se. I think they're exactly the same, but I think the impact is higher because our population is a lot more dense. We, their roads here, when I was growing up and we had Hurricane Elena, which just in that I was 85-ish, uh, I believe, it sat out in the Gulf and it just churned and churned and churned for like five days, I believe, if I recall correctly, four or five days, just sat there just chewing us apart. It just kept circling. It yeah. didn't move, it moved like a half a mile an hour. And it ripped down piers and bridges and put, a, put it put a pier from Clearwater Beach all the way to St. Pete. Wow. So like that's where they found this, the, the pier that ripped off. So it doesn't necessarily mean, but Pasco didn't exist. McMullen Booth Road in Eastlake, it wasn't a road. It's a road over it's, here. Now it's a road, it, but it, now it's neighborhoods and roads. So we've developed since then. Yeah, we developed too much. But it doesn't even have to be a hurricane in Florida. That you no. think it's just a, look at Sarasota, south of us, okay? Yes. We had rain, not even wind, just, just plain old rain. It rained. And we're it still did, getting it. <laughs> and we're still getting it. We did have a lot of rain. We had like, I don't even know how many inches. I think just over the weekend, we got five inches. Yeah, and some places they measured it by feet of rain. Yeah. Oh, it's no, okay. it's it's a we are in that 100 year rain cycle yeah. that they talk about. And this neighborhood got devastated. It was bad. I'm talking about three, four feet of water. It's horrible. Like horrible. I f feel for them. It was unbelievable. Terrible. Cars situation. were literally floating down the road. The water was from, so high. From rain. It's just just our rain showers. Not a storm, not a tropical depression, just rain. Listen to it. You're probably going to disagree with what I'm about to say. Okay? Okay. I would not buy in a new <laughs> development because builders sometimes buy the cheapest land there is and build thousands of homes and i know that i'm going to get comments on this engineer's report floodplains you know we figure it all out you know yeah and but i would want to find a place that has a track record but at the same time i know some areas that they build up subdivisions and they built all these homes and they're dry, but because of what they did. They affected somebody else. They affected another neighborhood. Right, and then when you get into these 100 year floods, you know, or 100 year rains, because yeah, it, what it's called is a 100 year floodplain or, you know, the X, it's, it's once in 100 years kind of thing. So that's when we, we talk about this and that's kind of what we, what we had. And these are those unicorn things that happen that just devastate a certain area. And the, the sad part about all this is when we get that much rain, that just illustrates the fact that we've over-engineered things to an extent. Yeah. And sometimes we don't know the effects of something mm -hmm. until something happens. And now they go, okay, cool. Let's look at a certain area that you live close to that used to flood constantly, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, if it rained in the afternoon, just on a normal day, you were driving through floodwaters. Yeah. Now, that's all been re-engineered and addressed over the last 10, 15 years or so. Yeah, that, yep. You know, so you don't have those issues anymore. No. Like, I remember bringing boats up to get people out of houses in that area. But what was weird is my neighborhood, you, you know, about five, six years ago, it was a Hurricane Debbie. Like, my neighborhood was collecting all the water, but they dumped it across the street and totally devastated another, another neighborhood. neighborhood. Right. right. And right. they just, because they don't know. So, they, it's you know, it's, it's a give and take. The water's going to go somewhere. Um, you know, there's, and there's something to be said about the asphalt. Because the water, the water doesn't seep into the earth. The water floods yeah, into and, and the grate not, and it, goes somewhere. Yeah, and this is, this is a soft soil. You know, it doesn't really absorb water really well. But anyways, that's today's video. You know, if you're moving to Florida, hurricanes, storms, it's part of the deal. If you have to accept it, it's not gonna go away and it's not gonna get any better. No, it just, it's part of life here. There's millions of people living here and if you, <laughs> and there's a lot of people And the moving. more people that move here, the worse it's gonna get. Hey, do me a favor, check out this video over here. I picked it just for you guys and consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. It's greatly appreciated. And we'll talk to you in the next one. Thank you. See you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.